after printing I don't know how many of my little ponies and Hulk and Captain America and all kinds of little toys because I have four kids I confiscated my 3d printer from my kids and I'm doing what I was originally intending to do with it which is make robots now I've got a I've got a new prototype of of a robot kind of in my head I haven't drawn it out in the computer yet um, I want to 3d print that but first I was like you know I want to kind of warm up on something. I want to print something out that I've done before that has a bunch of complicated parts and also has lots of gears in it so that I can use it like kind of as a reference for, you know, gear ratios and stuff like that. Because whenever I'm, whenever I'm in the midst of doing a lot of robot building, I'll get a feel for what the gear ratios of everything should be. But, you know, I haven't made anything like that in a little while. So I just want to have something for reference. Plus, give my 3D printer some tests to see how well it does. And this is the first piece I printed out. And this is the main drive gear for a Spider Tank Mark V, which is this. Okay, Jamie, get, this, get a video of the Spider Tank Mark V. I have coconut in my mouth because I was eating coconut. Get a, get a video of the Spider Tank Mark V and put it in right here, right here, go. Okay. So there's a little bit of a crazy story with this thing. Um, okay. <sighs> Originally I made this, this really rudimentary spider tank just to see, just a proof of concept, just to see if I could get the thing to work, right? Because I had this idea to make it and I just had to make a really basic one. That was the, that was the Mark I. And then the Mark II and III were just improvements just, you know, kind of tweaking things. And then the Spider Tank Mark IV, which is, a, Jamie, put a video of the Spider Tank Mark IV in here. Okay, the Spider Tank Mark, Mark IV was the first like real slick one, you know, where I was like, okay, I think I have things figured out. Let me make a, like a good one. So that was the Spider Tank Mark IV. And that was impressive enough to attract the attention of some toy companies. And I started working with a toy company to get it you know, into stores. And the, the biggest problem was that it wouldn't pass child safety because the legs, when the, the legs came out of the robot uh, in, in like two, two sticks like this and then one stick down here. And there's a concern that because these two sticks move around and stuff that a little kid could put their hand in here and maybe get pinched or something. Um, and that was a big issue. So you know, the engineers in China at some factory came up with some terrible solutions. And I was like, all right, just let me see what I can figure out. And I was like, all right, let me, let me take one of these sticks, blow it up, make it hollow, and put the other stick inside it. So instead we'll have this. And then you just have, and this, this ended up being the Spider Tank Mark V. And the first prototype was just some plexiglass garbage just just to see if the concept would work right and then you know the toy company guys of course are like okay can you can you put this into the computer somehow and I was like I knew that was coming um, and it was way too complicated a machine for their engineers to handle they didn't know what they were doing so I was like all right let me let me see what I can do give me a few days so I had an old copy of AutoCAD <laughs> which I'd used in high school which was like 10 years before I would, like 10 years previous to what I'm when I'm talking about. Um, but I knew I could, you know, draw 3D parts in AutoCAD, even though it's not the best 3D CAD program. But I was like, I should theoretically be able to do this if I can remember enough about how the program works and blah, blah, blah. And of course, the toy company guys are like, can you get it done like this week? And I'm just like, oh, this week? Oh my God, there's a lot of parts in this. Anyway. What I ended up doing was I loaded AutoCAD on my computer and then I sat down in a chair with my computer and I sat there for three days and three nights just drawing pieces. And I had the whole thing assembled in my head because first I just had to figure it all out in my head and then draw every single piece in AutoCAD and hope that my brain is working. And uh, at the end of the three days, I, I was actually just checking an email because that's where I just got the files for these pieces was in the email 
So I have an email that says, okay, it's 8 a.m. I think I'm done. Here's the first batch of pieces to 3D print. And what happened was I, I sent the whole whack of pieces, like, I don't know, 150 parts. So I don't know how many. It's a lot of pieces. A bunch of gears, a bunch of levers, like all the pieces for this, for this robot um, to England. And then they 3D printed every piece. And the original idea was that they could put it together, but their guys were like, I'm looking at this giant pile of parts and I have no idea what to do. So they shipped it to me and I put it together and I had to make one little adjustment on one of the pieces. But other than that, it came together and worked perfectly. And that's the Spider Tank Mark V that was in the video. Here, show it again, Jamie. Show the Spider Tank Mark V. Like this is the, the one that I drew in AutoCAD over three days and nights. No clue if it was actually gonna work. Sent it to the place, 3D printed it, sent it back, and it made this thing. And that's what I'm printing out right now. <sighs> so, so this was the first test piece and I figure this is the piece that's gonna have the most stress on it, this gear. And it is pretty strong. I'm impressed. And the other thing, the other reason I printed a gear first, are you guys whispering right behind my camera? Go away, <laughs> go away, go away. Anyway, the other thing I had to check was how good I could print these gear teeth. And man, these, these look really good. I think I'm gonna be able to print the whole thing and do a good job. None of my previous 3D printers could handle gears this fine. But anyway, this is gonna take a while to, to print all these parts out. Oh, I gave myself whiplash yesterday doing jumping push-ups. Can't turn my neck. Anyway, um, so these are some steering gears, which also look great. And I'm printing these out second because I'll be able to hold them up next to each other to see how well they interlock. But they're, they're looking really good. And when I checked through my email, I found all the STL files for this thing that I sent to those guys. Uh, there's only one issue, which is that they're not... <laughs> uh, let's pick one. Um, oh, what are these? Okay, this is a... Well, okay, let's open this. The only problem is when I made them all in AutoCAD, the dimensions were wrong, so it, it makes the piece huge. However, it's just because it was in inches and I was thinking in centimeters, so if I make it, I'm gonna make it 40% of, of this size, which is pretty close to the exchange of uh, inches to centimeters. Anyway, so we've got, now I just gotta, Stick this piece down. Wait, come on. Stick this piece down, right like that. So it'll print. Oh no! Oh no! Stop doing that. Okay, get off that thing. There. So yeah, other than other than the fact that they're all in inches, and I just need to convert them to centimeters, I have all the STL files for this thing. I'll have to put a little bit of a little bit of supports. Oh come on. Oh, touchpad is not. Great for this. I'll have to put a little bit of support under this little nub there. There's another little nub there. Other than that, I mean, this is a pretty easy part to print. And I made, I drew all these parts with 3D printing them in mind. So, uh, well, I'm gonna just keep printing them. I'm gonna print these all day and see how many I can get done. It's probably gonna take like two weeks. Oh, a couple other details about, about this uh, Spider Tank Mark V. I, you know, all the electronic stuff in it, I just had some standard size motors around that I put in it. And for the radio control, I went to the store and I found just a radio control car, like a two channel radio control car, cheap car, like $20 or something. So I took the electronics out of that and used that for the radio control for it, which works great. And you might be wondering if you're a technical person, how a two-channel radio control thing can walk in all the different directions and shoot, and not only shoot, but shoot different, different distances. Ah, there's some trickiness built into this design of this thing. In the car, the one channel does forward and backwards, and then the other channel does left and right. So on, when I took it out and put it in the robot, um, 
I kept the one channel for left and right, so the, the robot head swivels around on one channel. And then the other channel, I used half of it to go forward, but I don't need to go reverse because the whole thing can swivel all the way around, right? So if I want to go reverse, just turn all the way around. Um, so it doesn't need the reverse. So I use that other half a channel. So whenever you, you, you switch to reverse on the thing, it winds up the spring in the ping pong ball shooter. And the longer you, you hold the reverse, the more it winds up the spring. And so that, that defines how far it's gonna shoot. And then to shoot, you push forward. So you just start driving. And you don't actually have to drive. You just push forward for like a split second and it'll shoot right away. Um, and that's how it gets all those functions from two channels, which I think is great. And so I'm gonna have to go to the store and see if I can find a radio control car or truck or something that has similar sized motors that hopefully I can just stick in there. Or maybe I have to dig around in my junk. Oh, that just finished. Maybe I have to dig around in my junk to see if I can find motors to fit. But uh, I can probably find some kind of car or truck or something that has right size motors. Ooh, that's coming out great, I think. Always, always these little, little bits of fuzz. All right, I'm not gonna touch them for a minute because they're still warm and I don't wanna. I haven't mentioned this yet, but I love the magnetic print bed. Because you can take this thing off and it's, it's flexible. So you can bend it a little bit to pop the pieces off. Oh, so nice. All right, let's see how these, ooh, those mesh together so nice. Oh, that is really good. Yeah, I think those are totally gonna work fine. Wow, that is cool. Man, that is so good. I'm so impressed with this 3D printer. It's so good. Of course, let's wait to see till everything's printed out. But it's looking pretty good so far. Yeah, those are really good. All right, more gears. I think I'll just print all the gears out first. All right, Hulk, keep an eye on this. Hulk smash, no, 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 don't, don't smash. Just, just make sure, Hulk smash, no, no. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey now. 